Hello and welcome to Leading Through Crisis, conversations between European and American business leaders. This series is dedicated to facilitating conversations between business leaders and exploring how they are navigating a changing business environment. This is just a snapshot of the discussion. An audio recording of the entire conversation is available to members of the EACC upon request. Send your request with your name and company affiliation to EACC at europe-cincinnati.com. This episode's conversation was recorded on January 6, 2021. Again, a very special thank you to our sponsors, Clark Schaefer Hackett, Bannockburn Global Forex, Frost, Brown, and Todd. And now here's your moderator, Kai Bitter, a member of the EACC Board of Directors and an attorney with Frost, Brown, Todd. Hello, and welcome to Leading Through Crisis, conversations between European and American business leaders. The series is dedicated to facilitating conversations between business leaders and exploring how they are navigating a changing business environment. Our guests today are Eugenio Venturato, President of Farmecanica, and John Kronberger, Co-CEO of Vega Americas. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Clark Schaefer Hackett, Bannock Byrne, Global Forex, and of course, Frost Brown Todd. Let's get started. Eugenio, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm leading the uh, Famecanica North America organization. Famecanica North America was uh, founded and established here in the United States about 11 years ago. Um, the, this activity, this entity was uh, founded from scratch, was activated from scratch, meaning there was nothing before uh, other than a consultancy type of service uh, uh, with the entire business being led and handled uh, through uh, um, the corporate office and the corporate factory in, uh, in Italy. Thank you. John, tell us about yourself and Vega. So just a brief background, my name is John Cronenberger, and I'm the co-CEO of Vega Americas. We are a wholly owned subsidiary of a, of a German-based entity called Vega. And what we uh, do at Vega Americas and Vega globally is we manufacture, assemble, and sell instrumentation, high-tech instrumentation that measures level and pressure any place you find at tanks or pipes. So... John, what is the biggest lesson you have taken from the pandemic? I would say uh, be adaptive. Um, I used to think that uh, that in business you, you, you controlled what you can control, right? Um, and I think the pandemic taught me that, um, that there's a lot more out of our control as leaders than, than we used to think. Um, and so uh, the best strategy that you have um, works. It's important to have a long-term strategy. Uh, but it's important to be adaptive. And, and uh, on March 12th, uh, we kind of put, uh, put our program in place to, to adapt um, and advance as best we could. So I would just say be adaptive. Eugenio, what lesson have you taken from the pandemic? I think the pandemic has uh, you know, placed uh, us, myself, uh, first in front of... Um, the reality that is behind our employees. And reality is themselves, their family, their worries, their concerns. And uh, more than ever, you know, during this time, those elements were dragged into the office whenever and for those that were coming to the office. But even those that were not coming to the office, they had these, let me call it ghosts, you know, uh, with them pretty much all the time. And so uh, coping with this has also been uh, something that I had not uh, planned, something that I was not uh, concerned before. And so, as John was saying, adapting and accepting that not only you have to deal with the needs of the business, but you have to deal uh, with the needs of the employees and uh, help as much as possible. Um, if you had been able to anticipate the pandemic, what would you have done differently? Um, 
one thing that the pandemic uh, has emphasized or has highlighted or amplified, if you will, are certain areas of weaknesses. They were there before, but you know, the pandemic made it more visible, made it more clear. So if I could go back, I would have put more effort in hiring those resources that we were planning, bringing them in earlier. I would have accelerated uh, maybe some sort of uh, remapping and buffering of the supply chain. I would say that those are the areas that uh, if I could rewind the tape, uh, I, will, I will try to pay more attention to. John, what are you most proud of? You know, Kai, a lot of times I talk about balance. And I think, uh, I'd like to think at Vega, we, we found the right way to balance um, a crisis, uh, caring about people, uh, continuing to operate our business. Um, you know, what I found from the outside world during the pandemic was it felt to me like we were, we, the globe, were running at different extremes based on the day and the week and the um, you know, what you heard in the news. Um, and I think that running at the extremes and bouncing back and forth is always a dangerous, um, just a dangerous formula. And I'm really proud of the fact that at Vega Americas, we, we tried to find the appropriate balance between the personal side. I mean, people were going through a lot of different issues. Um, there were different levels of fear. Um, there were different needs from the perspective of childcare, illness, things like that. And we tried to strike the right balance in how we managed uh, the workforce. And then also try to make sure we, we kept our eye on the ball related to customers. Um, they had needs. We were an essential part of the, um, the overall supply chain that, that uh, makes everything from, you know, diapers to paper towels to, to you name it. And so we had to make sure we were still operating and um, that they were going above and beyond. And we wanted to recognize that. Um, and then we had to make sure we were making phone calls to our customers and answering the phone and, and finding ways to, to diagnose any systems issues they might be having with our products. Um, that, that's all part of the balance that you have to have. Um, there were weeks that where I think I spent more than half my time on what I'll call just crisis management. And, and at first I questioned whether that was the right use of my time. And then it wasn't long before I realized that that was the, should be the only use of my time. Um, because people need to see me and need to hear from me um, and need to hear from my partner, John Groom, that, uh, that we care about the customer, we care about the people, we care about the families. Um, and, and that, uh, it, it, was, it was an amazing time. And I would just say, we tried not to run to the extremes. We tried to take each issue with the level of balance. We tried to put a, a small team around us that could, that could make sure we were diagnosing problems quickly. Um, and if we felt like, uh, like there was consensus on an issue, uh, we made a decision and we moved forward, but always with balance in mind. Did you find it? I'm sorry, Kai, did, did you find at times, Eugenio, that you, you were learning and helping make decisions right along with your employees? Like you were in the soup right with them, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and and again, you know, I didn't read a book on coronavirus. I, nobody has given me a manual. And uh, you're absolutely right. You know, uh, you have to come in every day and um, be patient. Uh, determine what common sense suggests. Uh, how to split the workforce that has to be present and the workforce that can work from home, and uh, and go with it. So it sounds like you practice active listening and based on that information, you make decisions, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. These are things that is that the best leaders that this is what this is what they do. This is why I have to learn from these people. And, and it's just listening. Those are things and that that Kai is part of crisis management, right? So this this series has to be relevant five years from now um, when COVID, you know, hopefully will no longer even be in existence. Um, and, and concepts like listening to your employees, not having all the answers, those are, those are things in crisis management that are okay. And, and probably 40, 50, 60 years ago, um, that was not the crisis management playbook. But in today's day and age, why not say I don't have the answers? Why not say, you know, ask people of different ages, well, what's their ideas? Um, I can tell you the college kids have solved this crisis faster than we have. 
I have a college age son and um, they had an underground and they solved it faster. We probably won't talk about it on this video series, but I'm telling you, there are resourceful people out there of all ages that can solve problems. You don't have to be, you know, a 50 year old guy from Montgomery, Ohio, like me, it doesn't matter. You, anybody can solve problems. So, um, Eugenio, how do you distress during these challenging times? Oh, that's a, that's a very interesting question. You know, sometimes I call Todd Schwartz and I give him hard time and <laughs> that will allow me to just deflect. <laughs> sometimes I go to the bathroom, <laughs> I look at the mirror and I say, is it your decision or my decision? And <laughs> uh, so... Um, uh, guy, really, uh, I have to humbly admit that um, I don't know that I have found a good way to distress. Uh, I try to find the energy at the end of my day to go and run at least uh, three, four times a week, well, two to four times a week. And uh, that helps a little bit. It doesn't remove the stress, but it makes me more tired, so I sleep better. Um talking to um, peers, uh, talking to people that um, you trust, sharing experiences is also, uh, you know, uh, an important element. Uh, and at the end, I think uh, it is, you know, finding the five minutes, maybe every other day to say, hey, I am only in control of so much, which is extremely little and uh, accept our limitations and accept that, uh, you know, our common sense uh, will guide us uh, to do the best for ourselves and for the people around us. I don't have a recipe and I, yeah, I don't have one that I can give out. I can give you a good cooking recipe, but uh, not, not that one. That always helps <laughs> if you have good cooking wine. Yes, that, that has never been missing, you know, being uh, in an Italian family, <laughs> the good food. And, and the good thing is I didn't have to go to the restaurant. Uh, in fact, I don't, I very seldom go to restaurants. So we have that at home. And I had plenty of wine that I, it wasn't because of the pandemic. I decided to buy uh, wine because it was a very good deal. And so I, I've had plenty of wine, and it helps <laughs> with moderation. <laughs> John, how do you de-stress? Um, you know, first, I, I think I probably, I try to laugh a lot if I can. Um, I try to take myself, don't take myself too seriously. Uh, I think Eugenia has talked about collaborating with others. I think, I think using others as a sounding board is a great way to just validate and de-stress a little bit. Um, while I don't share my, my business dealings with my children, I find talking to people who are younger really helps because they have just a different view of life. They help you recognize um, that probably what you're doing isn't the most important thing in the world and probably just make a decision and move on. Um, that's probably a big thing. I exercise, you know, I love to, to run. I love to play tennis. I think that helps. But for me, the, the big thing is to laugh a lot, not take myself too seriously. Um, and, and I'll do what Eugenio said. I'll enjoy a glass of wine here or there. Thank you both. Thank you very much for taking the time. Thank, thank you for sharing your experiences with us. Um, to our viewers, um, uh, just a reminder that the full uh, video is available. Uh, to chamber members uh, can be downloaded at uh, europe-cincinnati.com again a very uh, special thank you to our sponsors clark schaefer hackett bannock burn global forex and frost brown todd thank you all and stay safe again a very special thank you to our sponsors clark schaefer hackett bannock burn global forex frost brown and todd thank you for joining us today as a reminder, this is just a snapshot of the discussion. An audio recording with the entire conversation is available to members of the EACC upon request. Send your request with your name and company affiliation to eacc at europe-cincinnati.com.